military air base. Let's hope, however, they give her the benefit of the doubt and they understand she's not uh, a solicitor, not a barrister, and that she will get a fair trial. I think the jury hopefully will, will in, in see to that. That would be my best uh, hope. I, I'm going to say I hope he has leniency towards the, the witnesses, that he won't be rejecting any of my witnesses. Last moment or not? Yes. We asked for the file from the last solicitor who walked out of this courtroom uh, last June, uh, unannounced and very, in a very surprising manner. Uh, we asked that uh, that file be given back and it's been requested several times. A lot of the work in those files uh, was done by people outside the actual uh, defence team, which is yeah. the solicitor and the barrister. Yeah. Most of the work and the argument yeah. um, had already been worked out, yeah. and skeleton defence is prepared. Yeah. And they walked into court with basically a lot of work that was done by other people uh, yeah. outside of their own office. Yeah. And it's a file that's very important to Mary's case. And the judge yesterday um, ordered that, that file be given back. Uh, that the actual file itself is boxes and boxes of stuff. Yeah. But actually what, um, what we got back last night was about eight pages of uh, very badly photocopied notes that are illegible. So it's not a file, it's, we got nothing back basically. But the police did go to the solicitor's office and uh, demanded that the file be given back. So it was a little win, you yeah. know. Uh, it's kind of no use now, we, if, even if we did get the file at this late stage, that the trial has started. It's yeah. starting right now, actually. And I believe that he's in Nina Hospital at the moment. He's in Nina Hospital, I believe, yeah. With pneumonia. It's bad news, yeah. I wish to, I told his, his, his partner there yeah. uh, to wish him well. I hope that he... Is he on the trolley? He does okay. He's probably been sitting on the trolley for four days, waiting like everybody else is in this country for a hospital bed, you know. So why are you here? Mainly to yes. provide expert evidence on issues of international law. As you know, part of Mary's defense is that she had a lawful excuse, yes. particularly that she was trying to prevent yes. a uh, crime against uh, a crime against peace, among other crimes that were being committed. And under international law, I believe that there clearly was a crime against peace being committed, and that is a integral part of her defense. And I hope to give evidence to that effect. I think airports you can have under international law dual use purposes of airports, but I think it's very dangerous to allow that dual use. It's one thing when military fly through that in peacetime. It's another thing when they're engaged in an armed conflict and they use that as a part of their launching pad for that armed conflict, because I would suggest it's not only people at the airport, but everybody in Ireland that's threatened because it makes Ireland a party to that armed conflict and makes it a lawful target then that by anybody trying to resist that use of force. So. So you are involved with uh, Saddam Hussein on this legal team? <laughs> that always seems to come up. Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein is one of about 2 million, 1,000 or 2 million, 50,000 clients I have. So oh, okay. I represent also 2 million internally displaced people in Khartoum yeah. state in Sudan. I represent uh, 15,000 Ethiopian refugees. I represent uh, people from about a dozen different African countries in individual cases. It's true, I'm also a member of the legal team of the former president of Iraq, and I represent quite a large number of people. So he is just one of my clients, and like the others, we're trying to ensure that his rights are respected. This is, this is Owen. Great Owen. To see you now. Hi, hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Owen, I just want to congratulate you. Oh, that's high praise for you, you Margaret. No, 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 no. The two of you work really well together, and he's you know, very discreet and everything. But I like the lack of expression on your face. I, I, I never wanted to become a solicitor, but this is making me have serious second thoughts. He was seven hours in the airport waiting for a flight last night. He stayed up all night in Heathrow. He, he was been travelling for the 24 hours. To be here, he's just two weeks after a very serious operation relating to depleted uranium toxicity. Oh I have also side effects of depleted oh uranium, no doubt about that. <gasps> Yes, oh sure. My God. Well, I was quite a long time in, in fact, I was working in, in hospitals, you see, so, and uh, all these situations. I understand your feeling. You have four children, and you know the side effects of depleted uranium, and I understand your sensitivity. 
some people have to stand up and be counted and unless people are willing to stand up and be counted you know the world becomes much worse place I've got four children like Mary and I don't want them to have to live in this world of terror and continuous war you know it's like 1984 where the, the war is being fought on all fronts and nobody knows quite what is happening I'll talk to O'Neill when we learn and set up a schedule. How are you today? And, and, and I just wanted to know if you felt very differently now that we know that the war is the legal war. As much as you know I'd like to talk to you, ma'am, you know I'm not in a position to be able to do oh, that. Oh, listen, come on. Just just a little kind of... This is a historical occasion. Yeah. And, and as, as important as these may be to you, you know I'm not at liberty to discuss anything. I know, but I can ask and you And I'm not questions. trying to be... You certainly can. Oh, I know. Right, yeah. You can ask me Sorry, anything you want. Okay. Oh, okay. Thanks, okay. Thanks, right. thanks very much. Okay, you have a nice day. Okay. Thank you. But well, I just hope you will, will reconsider the fact that your mission now is known to be an illegal mission. Ed Hogan, troublemaker. I'm here not to cause trouble, but to prevent trouble, right. uh, which is all much of what I've been doing uh, yeah. in support of Mary Kelly yeah. uh, for the peace actions which she took, promoting peace. And you have the facts, haven't you, about what's been happening yes. with Cannon? Yep. Which is the most important thing, the number of the planes. Yep. Mm. And also, have you got the facts about actually seeing the soldiers with their weapons? Very much so. So now what's happening about your case? It's up on the 1st of December, so I'm right. going for trial 1st of December. And that case is, if you just uh, remind us? For the crime of being under a shannon in a boat. <laughs> I talked to Dr. Cassius. Oh, no. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Ed Hargan, that's a privilege officer. How are you? I'm very, very well. I've just been telling Daniel about you. Have you met Mary's sister? Patsy. Mary's sister, Ed Hargan. I keep to Around the time at the beginning of the war, a lot of us actually went to the Garda stations round about and submitted formal complaints about the activities at Shannon Airport. And we named specifically the Peashock, the Thornish, the Mary Harney, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and other, other unnamed members of government uh, in the complicity in... <coughs> War. And a few, about a month later, we had a response from the superintendent in our area, Superintendent Corcoran and Ennis Diamond, and he said he could not investigate these the, ma the matters which arose in our complaints because the people cited in the complaint were resident outside his area of jurisdiction. I find it hard to tell I'm too involved in this. Uh, oh boy. Now, I'll just going to I think it's going very well. Yeah. We're all extremely positive yeah. and um, we're all very well prepared. And um, I think it's going to be an excellent trial. Mary Kelly is telling the judge what the law says yeah. and the prosecutor is telling the judge what he would like the law to say. Well, I think the judge has been revealed um, as a man with prejudice who's made up his mind and wants to exclude reasonable evidence and Mary, I think, put him in his place very well. I think the jury got the right signal. You're doing a great job all on your own. In fact, you don't need us. I think we, we, do. Sort of, we cloud we do. things up. We do. Because normally, <laughs> normally, it's just a small No, but you were just, you were just perfect great, today and I think, I think the jury listened to yes. your work and the way you did it and the delay yeah. We walked out, we were guided. I tell you, I asked spirits to come in today because I said I haven't the physical oh, strength. I, I wasn't in bed last good, night huh? since yeah. I left the court here from work. But this weekend, get some rest. I will. And also I, know. Yeah. I know, but it's only the one. You weren't there earlier when I started my evidence, I Margaret, so when I started crying. I, know. Oh, yeah. I couldn't even say Bridget without crying. I know. I know. <laughs> I value the basics and making sure that everyone is fed and content. And you cooked all this? Yeah. So what's in it? You know it, don't you? Um, in the soup, it's onion, garlic, cabbage, pumpkin, parsnips, and herbs. And then the couscous is 
Lots of seeds and tomato, herbs and beetroot. You probably know that Mary's been charged with criminal damage. Mm. The state views these types of crimes generally as actions not taken in a political context, not taken in a context of what might be happening elsewhere in the world. And in the courtroom, the prosecutor then says, as he tried to prove today, mm -hmm. and the last few days, that she damaged some property, that's all there is to it, and the jury should not think of anything else. Now, I think that's fundamentally wrong first in a moral sense. I think all of you will agree with that. Mm -hmm. But as a lawyer, for me, it's even more important that that's fundamentally wrong in a legal sense. One of the reasons for that, Mary tried to point out today, international law actually condemns many of the actions that were the basis of her acting. In other words, she claims that she tried to damage this single airplane to try to at least contribute to pointing out mm -hmm. that Ireland was contributing to an illegal act, a crime that was being committed by the United States. The court did not want to hear any of that, partially for the reasons I just mentioned, and partially because courts in Ireland, and unfortunately in many countries around the world, although the number is increasing very quickly, mm -hmm. they do not view international law as relevant to domestic law. I've been in court about 50 times out of about 70 arrests, mm -hmm. most of, some of which have not gone to trial. But, uh, and all the, the first one uh, was facing 12 felony mm -hmm. counts for a possible 115 mm -hmm. years sentence. I was the first person mm -hmm. ever prosecuted mm -hmm. for leaking documents, classified information, to the American public. The truth is I've been in many courtrooms with judges and prosecutors who are just as big horses asses as these people are. Uh, and just with, uh, there's an old, uh, looking at that particular judge, I'll be very uh, impolite here and say, uh, I have a phrase that I haven't heard since my high school days was that he looked as though he had a pickle up his ass, the judge. <laughs> Your ability to think well, which is just what my wife would have told me to do, uh, at least before answering which she'd gotten in the rhythm of doing the day before when it was a, made it a little frustrating. You know, she's waiting, she's waiting. But on the stand, it served her perfectly. She waits, it gives gravity to it, it gives drama, and then showed that she was thinking, and then, of course, she gave marvelous answers. And uh, so it was just wonderful. Why did you travel here? Well, I got an invitation. I'm very happy to be here, and throughout you are interested in the subject. So with great pleasure, I came here to show you. Well, I, I deplete uranium shell does when it hits, it creates the heat and then it makes millions of tiny bits of metal fly through there and that's what kills everybody. Mm -hmm. Bei diesem Einschuss wird im Innern des Panzers eine Temperatur von 1000 Grad Celsius freigesetzt, die Soldaten verglühen. Es wird Uranoxid freigesetzt und die Umwelt dadurch verseucht. My fellow Americans, major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. The war is officially over, but fighting continues and the silent tide of death keeps rising. This is the mother and child hospital in Basra. Sind alles schlechte Prognosen hier. Die Kinder leben alle nicht mehr lange. Furchtbare Situation. Das bedrückt mich alles so, wenn ich das sehe. Furchtbar, furchtbar, furchtbar. Sehen die Mütter dann ihre Kinder wieder zu, zurück nach Hause, damit sie zu Hause sterben. This seven-year-old boy died two days later. Well, I, 
I would like to say Mary Kelly is a mother of four children. So we have to understand her reaction. You see, this is very important uh, to mention. Uh, well, this is a point what I have in mind as a medical doctor. Having seen this film, we know the answer to the prosecutor who says, two wrongs don't make a right. She said, what's the wrong? Mm -hmm. How could taking an axe to this airplane be wrong? Mm -hmm. And she said, well, it wasn't wrong. It was the right thing to do. Summing up what I was saying about the necessity defense, what I believe that jury will recognize, at least some of the members is, not just she should get a light sentence. What Mary Kelly has a right to get from that jury is the judgment. Not that she is a nice person and she shouldn't go to prison and she should get a suspended sentence, but that she broke no law in hacking that thing with an axe because it was the right thing to do. Oh. Um, thank you from thank you. 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 Thank in the anti-Nazi resistance. He was, at that time, I believe 20 years old. He was a lieutenant. Did not really know what he was doing, except that he was anti-Nazi. He had been in Stalingrad and severely wounded, which is what saved his life there. And then, his, apparently, his life was saved as a member of the coup because his father was a Nazi. His father was a Nazi. His mother was a Jew who was saved, her life was saved, by being married to a Nazi. But he was in the anti-Nazi crew at 17, put in Buchenwald just at the end of the war, just for a couple of months, rescued and liberated by the Russians. But it's incredible to meet someone, not just because he's 80, there are 80-year-olds around, but even 50 years ago, to have met him would be astonishing because they were all killed, they were all executed for being in the coup. So he was one of the very few who, who survived that. Mary, good luck. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So Ed, are you going to be called back again today? We're going to try, because yes. uh, it'll be question once more we're feeling. Today, maybe even more feeling. Right. <laughs>